This video will describe the sampling guidelines for oral fluid collection in a swine herd. These guidelines were compiled and described by Dr. Marissa Rotolo, Dr. Ya Xuan Sun, Dr. Chong Wang, and Dr. Jeff Zimmerman in their paper, Sampling Guidelines for Oral Fluid-Based Surveys of Group Housed Animals. Oral fluid collection is a simple, efficient, and welfare-friendly method to monitor disease within a herd. This method utilizes the pig's natural curiosity to chew on cotton ropes that are hung in pens. The cotton absorbs oral fluid from the pigs, and the ropes are wrung out to obtain a sample. For a tutorial outlining the supplies and methods of collecting oral fluids, please see the video entitled Oral Fluids in our digital library. When planning to collect oral fluids, it is important to refer to guidelines that help determine the pattern of rope placement within a barn, frequency of sample collection, and the number of ropes that should be hung within a swine operation. Many sampling guidelines are available for individual sampling methods, such as blood draws and nasal swabs. But oral fluids are an aggregate sample, meaning one sample contains oral fluid from many pigs within a pen. Therefore, different sampling guidelines must be used. The objective of the study conducted by Dr. Rotolo and others was to develop these sampling guidelines for oral fluid collection in a commercial swine herd. First, this video will discuss guidelines for sample allocation, or how the sample should be spaced within a barn, as described in the paper by Rotolo and others. It is common practice for veterinarians and production personnel to hang oral fluid ropes in random locations within a barn. However, Recent studies indicate that fixed spatial sampling may be more effective when surveilling a herd for a disease. Fixed spatial sampling is the placement of ropes equidistant to each other on alternate sides of the alleyways within a barn. In this diagram, we show a finisher barn with two rows of 20 pins. You can see that with fixed spatial sampling, the ropes were hung every sixth pin and were equidistant from each other on either side of the alleyway. While this example shows the ropes being hung every sixth pin, the principle of equidistant spacing is applicable with any number of pens being sampled. To understand why fixed spatial sampling is better than simple random sampling, it is important to look at how disease spreads through a barn. Because infectious diseases are contagious, in other words, move from animal to animal, pens located near each other are likely to share the same disease status. This idea is known as positive spatial autocorrelation. In this animation, Various levels of disease concentration within a pen are represented by different shades of blue. The pens with the highest concentration of disease are in dark blue, while disease-free pens are colored white. This data was taken from Rotolo's nine-week study looking at the spread of porcine reproductive and respiratory syndrome through a finisher site. The color change of these pens represents the flow of disease spread through a single barn and also throughout the site. Focusing on one barn at a time, such as barn C, you can see that the disease spreads first to nearby pins, then throughout the rest of the barn. This shows that the spread of disease from pen to pen and barn to barn occurs in a spatially dependent manner. Spatial dependence is important because statisticians have shown that fixed spatial sampling is more effective than simple random sampling in the presence of spatial autocorrelation. So far, this video has demonstrated that pens in a barn should be sampled using fixed spatial sampling because of the spatially dependent nature of disease spread. Other considerations when surveying a disease within a population are the frequency of oral fluid collection, sample size, and probability of detection. Software to calculate the recommended number of oral fluid samples to collect will soon be available. Meanwhile, we know it is better to collect fewer samples frequently than to collect many samples infrequently. Consistency is key, and sampling more frequently allows a producer to detect infection within a herd early and respond more effectively. Next, let's see how the number of samples collected affects the probability of detection. This graph is complicated, so let's walk through this slowly. Later, we will show you why these numbers are important and how to use the information. The graph shows the probability of detection based on sample size, disease prevalence within a barn, and sample allocation in the barn. The y-axis represents the probability of detecting one or more positive pins. The x-axis represents the sample size or number of oral fluids collected in one barn. The different colored lines represent varying disease prevalences. For example, the gray line with circles represents the probability of detection in a barn where only one pen is infected with the disease of interest, whereas the red line with diamonds 
represents the probability of detection in a barn where nine pins are infected. As the number of samples collected increases, the probability of detecting infection increases. For example, in a barn where only one pin is infected, as the number of samples collected increases from 6 to 9 to 18 and so on, their probability or likelihood of detecting infection also increases. Likewise, as the prevalence or number of infected pens within a barn increases, the probability of detection increases. For example, if there is one positive pen in one barn of 36 pens, and we use fixed spatial sampling to collect oral fluids in six of the 36 pens, then the probability that we will detect infection in one or more of those six samples is 17%. However, if the same number of samples is taken from one barn with nine positive pens, the probability of detecting infection increases to 85%. The probability of disease detection based on prevalence and sample size can also be found in Table 3 of Dr. Rotolo's paper on oral fluid sampling guidelines. These tables and graphs can be used by producers and veterinarians to determine the probability of detecting infection in one barn. However, most commercial swine operations have more than one barn. This is important because the probability of detection on a site increases dramatically with the number of barns sampled. Therefore, it is important to collect samples from every barn, even if only a few samples are collected in each barn. There is a simple equation to estimate the probability of detection on a site when more than one barn is sampled. In this equation, the capital P represents the probability of detecting infection at the site level. The lowercase p represents the probability of detecting infection in one barn. And k represents the number of barns in the site from which the samples were collected. Specific values can be plugged into the equation to estimate the probability of detection for a farm site. First, let's find the probability of detection for an individual barn on the site. If a producer collects six oral fluid samples in a barn with nine positive pens, their probability of detection is 85%. Point 0.85 is substituted into the equation. And let's say there are three barns in the site that are all similar in design. Using these values, their probability of disease detection at the site is 99.66%. Using this equation, Dr. Rotolo constructed a table that can be used to estimate the probability of detection in more than one barn. Let's look at the probability of detection in a three barn site with five positive pins in each barn. If the producer collects two samples in each barn, their probability of detecting infection at the site level is 63%. For four samples in each barn, the site level probability is 86%. For six samples, the site level probability is 95%. However, remember the benefit of consistent sampling. Because pathogens are contagious and prevalence changes over time, consistent sampling will quickly reveal the presence of infection. In this video, we learned about sample allocation and the importance of using fixed spatial sampling, frequency of oral fluid collection and the importance of sampling consistently, and lastly, we looked at how the probability of detecting disease increases with sample size, disease prevalence, and as more barns are sampled. Thank you for watching the Oral Fluid Sampling Guidelines video. The information presented in this video can be found in Dr. Marissa Rotolo's paper on sampling guidelines for oral fluid-based surveys of group housed animals. Acknowledgements are given to Dr. Marissa Rotolo, Dr. Yashwan Sun, Dr. Chong Wang, and Dr. Jeff Zimmerman for this material. For more information about the Swine Medicine Education Center, please feel free to contact us at 515-294-7692, email us at isusmec at iastate.edu, or visit our website at www.smec.iastate.edu.